Eric Lee is the ship planner. At the head office in Hong Kong, he's using the latest in sophisticated cargo planning software. He calls all the shots when it comes to loading the Atlanta's 8,000 containers and must make sure that every piece of cargo is ready and waiting. A miscalculation could prove costly. The worst thing is the ship is sitting at the terminal, berthing at the terminal without any work. We lost a lot. Eric isn't the only one who has to get his planning right. Captain Llewellyn must get to the port on time. But before he gets there, the busy waterways are going to get even busier. It's time to call in the assistance of a local expert, the pilot. Every harbor has its own secrets. Fast currents, changing tides, shallow waters. In a tricky maneuver, the Atlanta is about to pick up the man who knows these waters like the back of his hand. Zamil Nair has been a pilot in Singapore port for over 20 years. Well, we trust him, but you've got to watch what he's doing. So it's uh, until he actually tied up, he's, you can't relax. Bringing this mega ship into dock is the most dangerous maneuver of any trip. Dead slow at the moment. The chain of command is strict and involves as many as 12 key individuals. Thank you, Thank you Balut. Uh, basically, uh, I'm working closely with the captain, ship's captain, and he's using my expertise in ship handling and uh, local knowledge to get the ship alongside. Three, one, four, steady, sir. Thank you. Dead slow, eh? Dead slow, eh? Uh, sea Labrador, Pile Labrador. We've got a tuck coming out there. It's going to be made fast at the stern on the port quarter. Uh, this tuck is about uh, 4,000 horsepower and it's a fairly big, powerful tuck. So basically, I'm going to swing the ship around to starboard and then backing down into the berth. Stop engines. Stop. Stop. Engine. With main engines stopped, the tugboat Labrador is tied to the stern of the Atlanta on the port side. Then it's dead slow ahead. Atlanta Bridge, gangway ready. Okay, Tango 1, uh, we'll see how. Tango uh, 1, Tango 1. We'll be starboard side, long side, uh, bridge to bow, 249 meters. 249. Okay, I see one of your crane is down. Eh? Can you check on the crane, please? Okay, okay. Tango 3. Bigger the ship, the smaller the space, pilot. Yep. The bigger the ship, the yep. smaller the space. space. Stop engines. Stop engine. Okay, Labrador, increase the full power. Yeah. At the stern is the Labrador, a 4,000 horsepower tug. Up front, the Atlanta's huge electric driven bow thruster adds another 3,350 horsepower. All up, the pilot has over 7,000 horsepower at his command. By combining the pull of the Labrador at the stern and the power of the bow thruster, the pilot cleverly spins the Atlanta into position. When the spinning is over, it's time for some precision parking. Okay, Labrador, slow to port, Labrador. It's the ultimate shoehorning exercise. That's slow, that's slow. There's no margin for error. The Atlanta is 323 meters long. She's being parked in a space with only meters to spare. Stop engines. Stop engine. What have you got for it now? How much? Five meters. Five meters, that all. So keep the after spring slack. Keep the spring slack as we come astern. Even though they perform this operation hundreds of times a year, it's a tense time for all the crew. All the way on your forward spring now. All the way forward. Two meters, two meters. Should be on the road in a minute. Position. In position, hold her, hold her, hold her on your spring. Another successful docking for the captain and Nair, the pilot. And the moment the Atlanta docks, things swing into action as the trucks line up for loading and unloading. 
Singapore is one of the largest container terminals in the world, handling 17% of the world's total container trade. In 2004, over 20 million 20-foot containers passed through the port of Singapore. For every single ship, every minute in port counts. A total of four giant cranes start moving the Atlantis containers at breakneck speed. The pressure is on. The Atlanta has 2,200 containers that need to be moved, and the captain's hoping it can be done in under 20 hours. This is where Eric's cargo planning is really put to the test. He has to pre-plan every move and allocate each container a specific position on the ship. No container should be moved twice. Double handling wastes time and money. So containers due to be unloaded at the next port must be stacked close to the top, while a container bound for America needs to be stacked deeper in the hold. The other major concern is keeping the ship balanced during loading. Too much weight on either side of the ship could put it in danger of capsizing. It's Jonathan, the first mate's job, to keep a close eye on the Atlanta during this critical time. His computer monitors the distribution of weight around the ship and also allows him to compensate for any uneven loading. Deep in the ship's hull are a network of giant ballast tanks. By moving hundreds of tons of seawater between these tanks, Jonathan can keep the Atlanta on an even keel. To complicate this balancing act even further, the ship has to take on fuel. The Atlantis tanks can hold over seven and a half million liters of diesel. This is a job for an expert. Bunker boats are the floating petrol stations of the port. This is the only time the Atlanta will take on diesel for the round trip from Asia to America. Today, they're taking on nearly 7,000 tons. It's an operation that will take over six hours. With the price of fuel around 280 US dollars a ton, this little trip to the gas station will cost the captain nearly $2 million. While the engine shut down, Alvin, the second engineer, can check out the crankcase. There are certain advantages to working on an engine this big. It's not often a man can stand inside a crankcase to check for loose bolts or undo wear on any of the moving parts. When a cylinder has a bore of nearly a meter and the piston has a stroke of 2.4 meters, any wear is going to cause serious trouble. Among the 2,200 containers being moved today are the two that started their journey two weeks ago in Australia. The container carrying the latest vintage of Australian Chardonnay needs to be moved quickly, but also with care. The last containers to be loaded on board are the refrigerated containers. These reefers are carrying perishable goods. The one carrying the Australian frozen seafood has to be kept at a temperature of minus 18 degrees throughout the entire journey. Jonathan, the first mate, hooks them up to the ship's power supply in order to get the refrigeration units working as soon as possible. While on board, the crew will check their temperatures twice a day, every day. Below decks, the crew go on a manhunt. At dock, there's always the risk of taking on extra cargo 